Festerson. Here. Gray. Here. Harding. Here. Melton. Here. Pauls. Here. Palermo. Here. Mr. President. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for remarks by Councilmember Pauls. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Good afternoon. I'm going to speak just a little bit about one of the individuals standing up here. <clears throat> it's by the name of Benny Palermo. Two weeks ago, he invited me to, to attend a ball game in South Omaha on 36 and Q. And all I heard in the crowd was, Vinny, Vinny, Vinny. I got tired of it. I want to say, hey, Rich is here too, <laughs> but I didn't. Uh, but anyway, he invited uh, several of us to be there, and I think some people were there at other time, part of the day. It was to a pace uh, ball game for the kids who I think the police are very involved in, correct? And uh, Vinny was up there, and he was a coach. And I mean, man, you talk about a tenacious person. But anyway, he did treat everybody well. But he also had, what I thought was uh, pretty nice about it is because both of these teams had played each other in the past. I think one had beaten the other one. And today it was a pretty tight game. Vinny was sweating, of course. But he had also, at this function, he had also invited what I call two Republicans, myself being one, and uh, Congressman Bacon. Bacon, just make sure you're listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then he invited a couple Dems, which he is, and then Mike Boyle. Boyle. <laughs> I hope they don't get harder. <laughs> Well, we're trying to make, make this uh, a little light. But anyway, uh, and we, we are laughing, having a good time. The game is over. And everybody's yelling, saying great things. And, uh, you know, when I played ball many, many years ago, and when you have politicians together, uh, oh, and by the way, his team did win the championship. Is that not true? I was hoping you didn't forget that part. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why, because he has a young daughter, and I know he's going to retire young if she turns pro, because he'll, you know, he's going to live off his daughter's life. <laughs> That's what I mean. Well, anyway, what I thought was interesting, you had both teams there really wanting to win, and you had four politicians there. And when I was younger, this is what I would hear. But I heard no trash talk that day. Um, sort of setting up, I guess, what are we going to talk about today? Trash. trash. Oh, <laughs> took my line. Thank you. An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting, and a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the east wall of the legislative chambers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the city council. We thank you for joining us. As a courtesy to those in attendance, we ask you please turn off or silence your cell phones. At this time, we have a procl proclamation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, as many of you know, tomorrow and later on this week, most of our young people will be going back to school. Um, and this proclamation recognizes uh, a national as well as a local group uh, that has been sponsoring the Million Fathers March for several years now. And um, I would like to ask Mr. Willie Hamilton with uh, Black Men United to come to the podium, please, while. Uh, while we read this proclamation and present it to him for the Million Fathers March, which is going to be tomorrow at 8, 8, 8, 8, 15. 8, 15. 8, 15 tomorrow. And the proclamation reads, uh, whereas on this first day of school, 2019-2020, families, teachers, and students set goals for achievement and attendance. And whereas fathers are our children's first teacher and set the example for economic, ac academic success, and love of learning, and whereas research has demonstrated that even from birth, children who have an engaged father are more likely to be emotionally secure, uh, confident to explore their surroundings, and as they grow old, have better social connections, and whereas when fathers are actively engaged, children are less vulnerable to the risk of childhood poverty, mental illness, juvenile delinquency, youth sexual activity, teenage pregnancy, substance abuse, and failure to complete high school, and whereas fathers enga father engagement and 
parent education programs help fathers gain parental skills and economic self-sufficiency, being, parent being parenting leading to better, better students, better schools, and better communities. And whereas on behalf of the Omaha citizens, we thank Black Men United for local sponsorship of an event that raises awareness of the importance of fathers playing a positive role in their children's education. Now, therefore, we, the City Council, the City of Omaha, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, August 14th, 2019, as Million Father March Day in Omaha. Address 4200 North 30th Street. Uh, that's where my uh, office is located, but I'm actually a resident of South Omaha, 5009 8th Street, apartment 3. And we know you're Willie, but you have to tell the clerk. Uh, my name is Willie Hamilton. And I want to th thank you again for uh, acknowledging the work that we do. This is our 13th year, and we uh, have recognized that fathers play a very important role. And we know that. When a father is actively engaged in a child's education, uh, Councilman Gray alluded to everything. Uh, education uh, problem goes down. Gang problem goes down. Uh, sexual proudness goes down. So we want to make sure that we acknowledge our fathers and the role that they play. And also, I just want to thank you again for acknowledging the work that we do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item 68 relate to the same project and can be considered together for Chestnut Hills, located northwest of Kilpatrick Parkway and State Street. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Item 6, an ordinance to rezone this property from AG District to R4 District, high density. Item 7, a resolution to approve the final plat for Chestnut Hills. Item 8, a resolution to approve the Chestnut Hills subdivision agreement. The public hearing on items 6 through 8 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Mr. President, members of the Council, John Bachman, 10250 Regency Circle. I'm here on behalf of the applicant and will answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Gray. Oh, I'm sorry, I left it on. I'm, I meant to turn it off. Roll call. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Melton? Yes. Paul? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Items 6 through 8 are approved 7 to 0. Items 9 to 10 relate to the same project and can be considered together for the Villas of Piney Creek located east of 204th Street and north of Blondo Parkway. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Item 9, a resolution to approve the final plat for the Villas of Piney Creek. Item 10, a resolution to approve the Villas of Piney Creek subdivision agreement. The public hearing on items 9 and 10 begin at this time. Are there any proponents? Yes, uh, good afternoon, members of the council. Kyle Bull, ENA Consulting Group, 10909 Mill Valley Road. Uh, this is a second phase project, 60 single family villa lots, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Items 9 and 10 are approved, 7 to 0. Item 11, a resolution to approve the preliminary plat for Millwork Commons located northeast of 14th and Nicholas Street. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. The public hearing on item 11 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Yes. Kendra Ringenberg, 9500 West Dodge Road, Suite 100. I'm here on behalf of the developer. I also have representatives from the developer here, Paul Smith and Keith Weesies, and Katie Underwood from Olson. If you have any questions, we're happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Item 11 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 12, an application to consider a Class C liquor license for Lighthouse Bar and Grill located at 2505 South 132nd Street. The public hearing on item 12 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Yes, uh, Gilligan Blanche Grove, 15676 West Maple Road, on behalf of Lighthouse Bar and Grill. Thank you. 
Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Item 12 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 13, an application to consider a Class D liquor license for 96th Street Quick and Friendly, located at 4751 South 96th Street. The public hearing on item 13 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Yes. Um, uh, good afternoon. My name is Farouk Rakimov, and I'm here. Um, uh, my address is 4751 South 96th Street, here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank Are there any other proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Item 13 is approved, 7 to 0. <coughs> Item 14, an application to consider an addition to the Arboretum's Class I liquor license located at 8141 Farnham Drive to add an area approximately 25 feet by 44 feet and an outdoor area approximately 46 feet by 43 feet to the east. The public hearing on Item 14 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Good afternoon, Council Members. David Levy, Barrett Home Law Firm, 1700 Farnham Street, here on behalf of the applicant. Representatives of the applicant are here as well. This is an addition to an existing liquor license to match an expansion of a license premises, which is the dining room and patio area at the Arboretum Independent Living Facility. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Call. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Item 14 is approved, 7 to 0. Consent agenda. Any member of the City Council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the City Council immediately following the consent agenda in the order in which they were removed, unless otherwise provided by the City Council rules of order. Public hearings on items, agenda items 15 through 17 were held. July 30, 2019. Roll call. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 15 through 17 are approved, 7 to 0. The public hearings on agenda items 18 through 28 are today. If you wish to address the council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item or items you wish to address, identify yourself by your name, address, who you represent, and if you are a proponent or opponent. Can we remove item 24? We will be removing item 24. Going once, twice. Larry Store, 5015 Lafayette Avenue, Omaha, Nebraska, 68132. I am an opponent of item number 25. That's still on the agenda. Okay. Um, I think the public needs to have more discussion and explanation about these programs. I don't, I read the paper every day and I don't recall hearing anything about the uh, Home program funds uh, for rehabilitation and resale, eventual purchase and sale, qualified and low income people that are at least uh, at or below 80% of the median income, etc. $660,000. Somehow that involves my property taxes, I would think. There are some city taxes somewhere along the line. And I think uh, if we look very simply at it, comic book style fashion, that maybe that that seems to me like that puts some people at an advantage over other people. It doesn't say that these people that are doing this have real estate licenses, but it raises some questions. Is, for example, is the Omaha Land Bank involved? What exactly is the Omaha Land Bank? If you go to the websites and look things up, it's a municipal organization. 
Special Omaha Municipal Land Bank meeting called for August 12th, Larry, 1890. I need to interrupt you. Um, you're off top. That's on the uh, third floor coming up. You're off top. Now, if you go a little further. Larry, you're out of order. Community Basically. Development Division. Come, come back on topic or you're going to have to declare you out of order and have you removed. Right. Okay, well, if you look up Omaha Land Bank, there are members you're of the out council and they're involved in it. Please take a seat. We'd like to have more openness about that. Thank you. Are there any anyone else wishing to testify as a proponent or opponent on the consent agenda resolutions? Public hearing is closed. Second. Roll call. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Palermo. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. We need a motion to allow withdrawal on 24. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Item 29, an ordinance authorizing and directing an issue as additional bonds for the Sanitary Sewerage System Revenue Refunding Bond Series 2019 in an aggregate principal amount of $23,500,000, A's and men with the whole requested by the Finance Department. Is there a motion? Oh. Roll call. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. One public hearing will be held for items 30 and 31, agreements with Heartland Workforce Solutions, the Greater Omaha Workforce Development Area Provider, National ABLE Network, and Dynamic Educational Systems for programs at the Greater Omaha Workforce Development Area One Stop Center in the amounts of $2,080,000 and $1,275,000. The public hearing on item 30 and item 31 begins at this time. Is there any proponents? Good afternoon, Erin Porterfield, 5752 Ames, available for questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. No motion today, just public. Item 32, an ordinance to approve the Nebraska Commission on Law Enforcement and Criminal Justice Fiscal Year 2019 Office of Violence Prevention Grant Program in the amount of $35,000 from July 1, 2019 to June 30th, 2020 to provide funding for human DNA testing. The public hearing on item 32 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? The public hearing is closed. Item 33, an ordinance to... Who? Is this a waste ordinance? No, not yet. Oh, okay. We'll get there. Thank you. Did you sign in? Yes. Thanks. Item 33, an ordinance to approve an agreement with Douglas County in the amount of $6,923 and to authorize funding from the City of Omaha's fiscal year 2018 School Violence Prevention Program to provide funding for the travel of three employees to the Association of Threat Assessment Professionals Conference in 2019 and 2020. The public hearing on item 33 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. One public hearing will be held for items 34 and 35. Item 34, an ordinance awarding a contract to FCC Environmental for the Omaha Solid Waste Collections Contract for the years 2021 to 2030 with an estimated annual cost of $22,691,046. A's communication from Mayor Jean Stothert. B's communication from the Public Works Director. C is an amendment of the whole for FCC three cart system. D is an amendment of the whole for West Central Sanitation two cart system. E is an amendment of the whole for West Central Sanitation three-cart system. F is communication in opposition. Item 35, an ordinance to amend section 33-46 to change the number of permanent inhabitants needed in a single unit to exceed the established solid waste limit from eight to five. So before we begin the public hearing, I just have an announcement that there was a sign-in uh, sheet process if you wish to testify on these items during the public hearing. So if you have not signed in and wish to testify, please see the clerk and they'll make sure that you sign in on the right side of the issue depending upon what your perspective is. Uh, item 34 is the contract recommendation for uh, FCC, so we'll begin with the Public Works um, Department and Mr. Tyler on that and then we'll go to proponents and those who have signed in. Uh, so if Mr. Brazil could be ready. 
in the in the on deck. Okay. Um, thank you, um, Jim Tyler, City of Omaha Public Works. I'm the Assistant Director for Environmental Services, and I've been asked to say a few words on behalf of Public Works. I have a prepared statement. I will submit that to the clerk when finished. Uh, the Public Works Department strongly recommends the award of this contract to FCC Environmental. We support the mayor's recommendation, which is to award this contract to FCC Environmental and to award bid alternate 3A, the two-cart co-mingled with bi-weekly recycling. To quote a few statements from the mayor uh, taken from the op-ed that appeared in the most recent Sunday World Herald. The council's decision will impact every Omaha taxpayer for the next 10 to 20 years. Our objective must always be to collect your trash, yard waste, and recyclables on the day of scheduled collection. And when solid waste is not collected in a safe and timely way, public health and public safety are impacted. And I want to reemphasize that and what I see as the most important point, uh, public health and public safety are impacted. This contract is about public health and sanitation. This is about making sure we hire the company that demonstrated to the working group and our outside consultant that their bid provided for the adequate number of resources to perform this duty under all conditions. The Omaha Public Works Department, as part of its duties for the city of Omaha, provides for the safe disposal and collection of wastes that are generated by our residents in order to protect public health. If you flush your toilet, if you set out your garbage, the Public Works Department either contracts for or provides for the safe collection and disposal of that waste in accordance with all environmental rules and regulations. Garbage, when left uncollected, can lead to diseases that are common in third world countries. You may think this can't happen in the United States. We're too advanced of a society to do that, have this happen. It's happening this year in Los Angeles. The Public Works Department is not in a position to recommend a company that may or may not be able to provide the services necessary to meet the responsibility of protecting public health and sanitation of our residents. We must recommend the company that we know will deliver this essential service all of the time <coughs> under all conditions. Our outside consultant, SCS Engineering, who does this work all over the country, recommended FCC as the best, most responsible bid received. The five-member working group that reviewed all of the information contained in the four bids came to the same conclusion. This group included members of the Public Works Department, a representative from the Finance Department, and a retired city attorney. Meetings were held over a period of weeks to, to come to this recommendation. This was not a split decision. It was a consensus recommendation that we made to Director Bob Stubbe, who in turn passed this recommendation to the mayor. I want to add a few notes about the prices and proposed level of resources required to do the work that we received from the four bidders. And I know you've all heard these numbers before, but I just want to say these one more time to reemphasize what we saw and why we made the recommendation, recommendations we made. Our consultant, SCS Engineering, developed a cost model for each alternate in the bid documents. Their model also estimated the number of trucks required to do that work. SCS's estimate for this alternate was $24,700,000 with 51 trucks to do that work. Three of these bidders, FCC, Waste Connections, and Waste Management were within 20% of this estimate and had operational plans that assumed more trucks than the SCS model. FCC came in at 8% below that estimate with 59 trucks to do the work. Waste Connections came in within 1% of that modeled estimate with 65 trucks to do the work. We may think that may have been an error. Their number may have been closer to what the model predicted. Waste management, the current provider, came in at 18.2% above the estimate with 53 trucks to do the work. Public Works believed that the bids received from these three bidders, along with their comparison to the estimated cost for the work by our consultant, gave us a good indicator of what the value of this contract should be. 
This is in addition to our understanding of costs from our peer communities and a recent bid for the city of Bellevue, Nebraska. All of this data indicated to us what the market value of this contract should be. These numbers showed us that the bid provided by FCC was reasonable and provided more than an adequate number of resources to perform the work. It was close, but on the low end of what the information told us we should be paying for this work. WCS bid for the work 36.9% below the estimate of our consultant and nearly 40% below the average of the other bidders. They have proposed to do this work with 40 trucks. This is a fleet size that is 20% below what the consultant estimated and 25% less than what was proposed by our current provider. Mr. Don Williamson, owner of WCS, who I respect greatly, has stated that they have shown as a company that they are able to come in 20% less than the big national companies. We may have been able to look at them at 20% below, but not at 40% below. The numbers, no matter what you believe about the use of technology and automation, show us that the bid received from WCS did not provide for the adequate resource to perform the contract. Taking a close look at the number of resources that they added in the yard waste bid, that along with the numbers I previous, previously provided, validates our belief that the bids from WCS for this and all other alternatives did not provide for adequate resources to serve the contract. Concerns have been raised by council members on the level of service with the two-cart commingled alternate. In response before you today is the mo modification to the code to provide free additional capacity to residential households having five or more inhabitants. Based on data received from Metro Area Planning, Public Works will budget up to one million to cover this additional capacity. We believe based on participation from the pilot study, the cost will be closer to about $250,000. Uh, some of the other things I have in my prepared statement have more to do with how this contract works with the yard waste contract. I'll hold those comments and they'll be provided in my written testimony. You'll be I'll around be, for I'll questions. I'll be available for questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tyler. At this time, we call Mr. Brazil. Next up is Laura Hubbard. Good afternoon, Mr. President, uh, fellow members of the council, Dan Brazel, uh, 9172 Lay Road, Houston, Texas, uh, FCC Director of Collection Services. So we've, we've been after this process for, for quite some time, and obviously all of us have had uh, a lot of conversations throughout that process. And really, I reflect back on the earlier stages of this. I know, you know our team spent countless efforts coming to the city of Omaha to ensure we were analyzing the city properly and to provide the proper resources and routes needed for the city. When you look at our proposal, you know, we boast 59 routes, which we feel is the proper number to adequately service the city of Omaha, providing residents with the service they, they expect. Uh, so, so currently we operate in Texas and Florida. Uh, you know, a comment has come up in the past that we're a Spanish-based company and, uh, you know, a lot of comments about Spain. Now, now that is true, however, what we have done over the last year and what we're working on is as we integrate into the U.S., we have formed uh, two U.S. companies, both in Texas and Florida, and if we're fortunate enough to receive the, the award for Omaha, we would be forming FCC uh, Environmental of Nebraska, which you would headquarter out of Omaha. So really for us, this is you know obviously a desirable contract, but really would be a pivotal point for us in the Midwest to build upon future operations on uh, future customer base, ultimately providing more opportunity to Omaha residents for, uh, for job opportunities in the future. Uh, several months ago, we provided a proposal to Public Works outlining our plan to provide to the city the means in which we could help recycle and have a sustainable solution for removing the current personal containers that are on the street with the residents. Obviously, as the containers, the new 96-gallon carts come in, there's not exactly room for the old containers. The estimate is probably there's four to 500,000 personal containers in place currently in the city. Uh, we have a solution for that through experience and a vendor partnership where we can provide at no cost to the city, uh, allowing a sustainable solution to help uh, recycle those materials and, and ultimately help the city out. 
Uh, I've spent the last three months roughly working with waste management. Uh, you know, I have a, a relationship relating back, but for me and for our company, we know that the transition is vital. And obviously, we don't have the award, and, and obviously, that's up in the air, but we know that starting early on that is key for us. So our goal as, as FCC, and if we're, we're fortunate enough to obtain this contract, is to transition as many employees as we possibly can from waste management. So. I've had extensive conversations with local leadership as well as senior leadership overseeing this current contract to express our interest in that partnership and a smooth transition for everyone, including the residents of Omaha, uh, to focus on that staffing piece as we know that's a, a pivotal key uh, component to this contract. Uh, lastly, I'm, you know, I'm in front of you today as the Director of Collection Services for FCC. We've all had a long journey together and I'm here uh, asking for your for your support with uh, the uh, proposal that's in front of you from the mayor and endorsed by Public Works, and appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, and you'll be around for questions. I will. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Laura Hubbard. <clears throat> Next up is Danny Stanton. Good afternoon, Mr. President and Council Members. My name is Laura Hubbard, um, 840, um, 145 Glenwood Valley Drive, Harmony, North Carolina. I'm Director of Municipal Sales for Toter. We're a cart manufacturing company that has provided millions of carts across the U.S. for over 50 years now. There's two keys to a really successful collection contract. The first is service, and we're confident that FCC is going to be able to provide you guys in the City of Omaha with the service level that they need. We have seen FCC approach the service levels and we know that in a startup such as this, they're going to handle that in a way that um, is, is planning, as Dan mentioned. They're going to go in. They've worked with us extensively on this project. We're currently working with them on a project in Florida right now in Palm Beach for 110,000 homes. And we know that they're going to provide that level of service that the, that the residents of Omaha needs. The second is quality equipment. Carts are the one item residents touch daily. If there are issues with the carts, the city's going to hear about it. Ultimately, the contractor is going to be responsible for fixing those issues. But you're still going to hear about it because your residents are going to be complaining. You're still going to hear those complaints. So it's really vital that you have a good product out there in the streets. Toter is the only cart manufacturer that proposed a 15-year body warranty and a 12-year warranty on all the other components. Our carts are 100% recyclable at the end of their useful life and manufactured using up to 50% recycled content, which is the highest amount of recycled content proposed by any cart vendor to the city of Omaha. The city has chosen black for the cart bodies, which is also lends itself to be the most amount of recycled content that can be used. And the amount of recycled content in our carts that would be provided to the city of Omaha if selected would not compromise the integrity, durability, service life, or the warranty of the carts. Because FCC has selected toter, as a cart vendor, the large 96 gallon, as well as the small 48 gallon, would come from the same manufacturer. That would give uniformity and a nice, clean, consistent look on the curb. You can be assured that FCC is investing for the residents of Omaha to ensure that they have a cart that is easy to use, safe, and will provide lasting benefits for 15 to 20 plus years. Thank you. Danny uh, Stanton. Or Donnie, I'm sorry. Good afternoon, Mr. President and members of the City Council. My name is Donnie Stanton, and I live at 2302 South 178th Street in Omaha. And I've been, I have a transportation and logistics background with about 26 years experience, uh, mostly in transportation. And I've been following this uh, contract and going back and forth for a few months looking at this as a resident and looking reading the articles in the World Herald watching um, some of the City Council meetings as well what I've learned from these articles is that each company has proposed their bids based on the number of homes collected per truck it appears from my analysis that waste management waste connections and FCC environmental we're pretty much in line with each other claiming that each truck can collect roughly 700 homes per day per truck. 
West Central Sanitation, however, claims that they can collect over a thousand homes per day per truck, if my analysis was correct. I know from personal experience in this industry that putting that much more work on a truck will result in poor service, which ultimately impacts the residents of Omaha. The, the facts, based on my analysis, FCC Environmental states that they will street 59 trucks per day, as stated earlier today, and will collect roughly 674 homes per day per truck. West Central, I'm sorry, Omaha's current contractor, Waste Management, collects roughly 763 homes per day per truck, and Waste Connections uh, came in stating they would collect 707 homes per day tr per truck. West Central Sanitation claims that they will street 40 trucks a day and will collect 1,074 homes per day per truck. As a resident of Omaha, I personally like the two-cart plan that allows for unlimited seasonal yard waste versus the three-cart plan. As we all know, yard waste is really heavy in the spring and fall months. Uh, that's where the bulk of our yard waste comes from, which means that a resident such as myself would not have to find a place to put this third 96-gallon cart for just in, in my garage or wherever it may be for just those times of the year. The other issue I see with a three-cart plan is that any excess yard waste that I would generate and would not fit into this three-cart plan would require me, if I'm not mistaken, to purchase, purchase a sticker at the cost of $2 per bag to be removed from my property. The seasonal unlimited option affords me, the re a resident, the opportunity to get rid of all my yard waste when it's needed without having to purchase stickers for additional bags. Again, from the articles that I have read and the analysis that I have performed, FCC has the experience in many other similar sized cities to Omaha and West Central Sanitation's largest city is Mankato, Minnesota. The number of homes in Mankato is approximately the size of one council district in Omaha, or if my analysis is correct, roughly 20,000 homes. West Central, in my opinion, would have to double in size to support this contract, and the residents of Omaha are not willing or should not be willing to take that risk when it comes to the service of their trash. We have been experiencing these service delays enough with our current waste contractor. To me, FCC Environmental seems to have the required experience and resources to be successful in the city the size of Omaha. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Uh, Tim Teets. And that's the last proponent who has signed in. If, there, if you wish to testify as a proponent, last chance to sign in with the clerk right over here to my right. Good afternoon. My name is Tim Teets, 17259 Pine Street. As a resident, I want a consistent and simple, straightforward waste program. I do not want trash. I don't want. Do not want trash day to make my neighborhood look messy uh, and unruly like it does today, with multiple types of trash cans, bins, and bags strewn everywhere on the street. I'm here to support the FCC two card plan with the unlimited seasonal waste, because that is the one I feel has the best chance to succeed and giving Omaha a regular and consistent waste collection program without the confusing sticker program or an extra cart. I've worked for and with many companies throughout the Midwest focusing on the efficient flow of material uh, through transportation, logistics, and distribution operations. I've been trained and certified in, in lean manufacturing and Six Sigma practices and procedures. The training focuses on real life metrics that tell the true story of efficiency. The reason I'm speaking today is that from what I've read and analyzed the discussion, in, in the discussion about this bid, a big red flag jumped out at me, and the, the number of trucks to support the Omaha bid. Waste management uh, at 763, Waste Connections at 707, FCC at 674, and West Central at 1,074. If there was evidence of this type of efficiency uh, in cities the size of Omaha, I would be extremely impressed. But since West Central's largest city is Mankato, it begs the question if they're truly prepared uh, for the volume, they are uh, trying to be more than 50% more efficient at 
than the companies who have experience in, com in cities this size. I do not think it is wise for the city uh, to take on a substantial risk on a 10-year contract uh, for an unproven entity. Thank you. Thank you. We have one more proponent. If you tell me your name, you can sign later. Bo Sullivan. Bo Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan. And your address, too. You bet. Thanks, Mr. President and Council Members. Uh, Bo Sullivan uh, with Rared Pacific, uh, 7800 100th Street, Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. And so a little bit about Rared, who we are, what we do, how we've partnered with FCC across the country, not only in Texas rollouts, um, as well as Florida, from not only a cart and technology standpoint, but having that from a seamless project um, of a one-stop shop. So Rared Pacific, going on 106 years being in business, is a family-owned and operated. So it started with a wooden milk crate, evolved to injection molded plastics. Cool story, we were Pepsi's vendor of the year in 2011. So we helped them decrease their operational costs of having a pallet drop at a gas station, have to unload it, take it in. So from safety, operational times, we helped them save over $10 million operationally. So that's where a uh, proponent of FCC, uh, of the partnership we've had with them, however that looks in this project, um, that their support and what's unique with us is we have seven different manufacturing facilities so when you talk about a project of 300,000, potentially 450,000, it's critical. If a machine goes down, you have other places to pull from. It's really cool is we have one less than 200 miles away from you guys down in DeSoto, Kansas. So kind of a cool story from how we can recycle, products go back in that, and it's, it's locally uh, produced to you guys. Um, also, and I'm, if you could, I don't quite understand what you're saying your company does. Cards and technology solution based. So uh, example I was going to highlight is City of LA in Toronto. We provide carts, uh, so we actually had a 10-year contract with City of LA and Toronto. LA just got extended for another 10 years, and Toronto was extended last year for another 10 years, and that's gone beyond just just the carts. City of Toronto, we perform all the cart maintenance for them. So just okay. a little highlight of what we've done and how we have endorsed FCC in the past. And you're in addition to the totes, correct, uh, Miss Miss yep. Hubbard's. So um, giving the city visibility into. Uh, the service verification, so when those carts get dumped, and then also from a work order, because it's critical. And your situation, the city having the capital expenditure for the assets, and how can you reduce that over time, and having that visibility of those assets getting moved, so that way down the line when you do have warranties, you have visibility not into the warranty process, but then understanding if you guys have to pay for future carts, making sure that's getting managed in a proper way and you have that visibility. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, it's Rarig, R-E-H-R-I-G, and then uh, Pacific. Just like the ocean. You got it. You got or it. the street. Yep, from Omaha. that's right. Okay. All right, well, thank you Any for questions? coming in your testimony. You'll be around if anyone has questions. Absolutely. And other thing highlight I thought was pretty cool was out of the four people that submitted, we were part of three out of the four. Okay, that. Yep. thank you. Thank you. We'll now move to the opponents who signed in and begin with Don Williamson. Welcome back, Mr. Williamson. Mr. President, can I submit comments to the city clerk? Please? Of course. If anyone has statements, by the way, that you brought with you that are prepared, you can always hand them to the clerk and they'll be a part of the record. Uh, Mr. President and City Council of Omaha, once again, we appreciate having been part of this process uh, almost from the beginning. And I've enjoyed the discussions I've had with many of you and the opportunity to meet you personally. Uh, we've been humbled to have this chance, and it's kind of a chance of a lifetime for our company, so we do appreciate it a lot. We put a lot of effort and intention into our proposals for Omaha, and we know that we can be successful in them. Our reputation is our most prized and hardest earned asset, and we protect it and keep it unblemished, and we will continue to do that. We've worked hard to demonstrate that our proposal is viable, and uh, we've gone to the effort of uh, showing you and trying to demonstrate to you how we can do that. Our proposal was also vetted by HDR Engineering as uh, an act of the city to do that, and we appreciate that effort that the city council and the city took to, and public works, to prove our plan. HDR did find us uh, to, be, to be able to have a plan that was successful. They did not find anything that said we would fail, and so we appreciated that evaluation. We've also provided letters from our banks to assure the finances that were necessary to provide all the assets and the real estate necessary to provide for the contract for the City of Omaha. We've submitted bonding sureties from two separate uh, surety companies, 
And they don't issue those assurances lightly. Uh, they have a vested interest in our success in the city of Omaha. Before we submitted our proposal, we took the time and the effort to come to your community, spent many weeks here and time, uh, and I was on some of those trips along with Ray and Taylor, and we had other operational people work with us. We took the time to go through the troublesome alleys, they're called troublesome or tricky, through on-street parking areas, and we went through with, me with actual measuring devices to make sure that our plan would succeed before we submitted it to the city. We have full confidence that our plans will work and will work to our expectations. We even went to the trouble, and uh, I shouldn't say the trouble, but we took the opportunity to bring carts to town, and we worked with Rare Pacific to bring carts to the community, and we spent a day on July 11th, which some city council members were able to fit into their schedule, and we appreciate that, and we tried to demonstrate how our equipment, the types that we have specified for the city, would work in alleys that are difficult. These alleys and these sites were picked by the Public Works Department as typical uh, uh, venues that we would that we would see in our operational plan in Omaha. And we showed, I believe, and demonstrated that we could do that with the type of equipment we specified. We're not the lowest bid because we're cheap or because we're ignorant of what it takes to service the city of Omaha. We are celebrating our 40th year of a growing company every year. And um, it is our specialty to come into cities that have trouble uh, with the solid waste plan, and we succeed in every one we've ever done, and we would do the same for you. We are the lowest bid because we've been intentionally different in our approach. We've intentionally utilized more technology and more automation. It's not technology or automation that we're unfamiliar with. It's technology and automation that we currently use in our operation every day, and we have many years in our track record of using it. It's not new for us. We believe we'll, that our bid was the most responsive to the initial RFB. If one were to look at the conditions and the projections of the RFB, we believe our, believe our bid and know our bid most closely reflects what was anticipated in that bid. We've provided the most efficient and most automated method of collection available for the City of Omaha. Our method would be safer for drivers and would bring a better environment for the drivers and operators every day than to what they currently um, experience in the current conditions with which they're asked to perform for the city of Omaha in the current in the current method of collection. It's important that whatever contract the city of Omaha uh, takes up and enters into, that it provides the kind of conditions that are going to keep drivers happy and operators being able to work at their top efficiency and to come home every day satisfied, not only that they got a job done and made a paycheck, but they made the city happy and satisfied. If there's anything that drives a man or a woman every day to succeed, it's to know that they can put forth their best effort and come home at night feeling good about the job they've done. And that's the kind of company we built, and that's the kind of company we would propose to build in Omaha. Our bids have been consistent in their pricing. We believe that our three-cart 1A option for yard waste, as originally contemplated by the RFB, issued by the Public Works Department is the best option for yard waste collection in the city of Omaha. It includes permanent assets and personnel, not seasonal or not rented, not temporary workers, but permanent year-round. We think we see the importance of that today because it's very hard to get a CDL driver number one. It's almost impossible to get a CDL driver to work for you for six weeks of the year. They're looking for permanent work and they're looking for a place where they can put down roots. Our yard waste proposals are permanent workers, permanent assets, not a rented fleet. We offer 35 weeks of separated yard waste service, not just 8 weeks or 12 weeks a year. And I'm sure if you did an assessment of people around Omaha, you would find that they're producing yard waste even in the middle of July or the middle of August as they trim their bushes or a storm comes through and there's yard waste that comes down. Our proposal also is a guaranteed 10-year that reflects the original the contract with trash and recycling collection. It's a 10-year guaranteed yard waste service, not just a five-year guarantee that is the current mm -hmm. uh, supplemental yard waste proposal that will be before the council coming up. I don't know if this overhead is working or not. They'll turn it on for you. Would just they please? Give it a second. And um, it'll come. Up. I should have probably asked for that. And there's a, there's one thing that has come up uh, as we've reviewed the supplemental yard waste plan, and I don't know if I can get that quite screened for you, but let me try to move it for you. And what I did is just showing you that 
the, the, the new supplemental yard waste plan anticipates the use of yard waste bags that are compostable. They're a very good product. Um, we've used them in the past. There's nothing wrong with them. They are compostable. But there's one thing that needs to be recognized by the City Council as they anticipate moving to a supplemental yard waste plan. The use of that plan, uh, unlimited or whether it be 10 or 20 bags, anticipates the use of these bags. And these bags, they said, are very functional, they're very good, but there is a cost to them. The cheapest ones I can find in the city of Omaha are about 45 cents a piece. And I just want to let the, the, the city know that the use of the third yard waste cart per year, would, uh, over a 35 week period, would save the residents of Omaha nearly $7 million a year, or roughly $47 per household each year, just in unneeded packaging costs. These yard waste bags are good, but they are a package. They are something we don't reuse. It is compostable, but it is an expense. It, is a re it takes resources to make them. Carts do too, but frankly, carts have a life of sometimes 20 and 30 years. We know, because we've had carts for over 30 years that are still in service today. And if we were to work out the financial uh, formula for that, you'd find that the carts would be much cheaper for the environment and the resources for using them than these yard waste bags. But I do think that this is something that the city needs to anticipate and think about when they talk about what type of yard waste plan or collection plan you're going to use and enter into. West Central Sanitation also saves the city of Omaha $2 million a year, not counting this yard waste expense by the city residents. But just in our plan is we, had, we save the city $2 million per year, which is $20 million over the life of the contract. That $20 million is more than the city of Omaha pays for one year with your current vendor waste management. That's a, that's a recognizable savings, and I think it's important with the needs of the city budget. It's important that the assets for collecting yard waste in Omaha be owned and be permanent. This is important, and this is what part of our three-card option 1A provides. For a city the size of Omaha, it's too risky to accept anything less. We discussed the city's yard waste needs with individuals of both Deffenbaugh and with waste management. We, being in the business as long as we have, and uh, of some of our other staff and personnel have worked with people from those uh, companies in the past. We had people there that have worked with the city of Omaha, and they told us what the needs were for, for these contracts. We're confident what we've proposed is more than adequate. In summary, West Central Sanitation is the only bidder whose operational plan has been independently vetted by an independent engineering firm, HDR. West Central Sanitation is the only bidder who's provided the financial assurances above and beyond what was requested in the bid documents. West Central Sanitation is the only bidder to have physically demonstrated our proposal in Omaha streets and alleys with real trucks. And we also continue to be the lowest bid. We believe we've gone above and beyond in our efforts. If chosen to service Omaha, the effort we put, have put forth in pursuit of this contract is the same effort you can expect from us and from me personally every day. We would provide the service the city expects, and we would satisfy the problems that you've, been, that you've had recently. Thank you, Mr. Thank President you. and City Council. Next opponent is Spencer Magruder followed by Stephen Italis. Again, if you wish to speak as an opponent and have not signed in yet, there's a sign-in process today. You can sign in with the clerk. Spencer Magruder, 1524 Cummings. Um, I stand here today as a taxpayer um, and a safeguard to the integrity of the, this procurement process. The integrity of this procurement process is codified by municipal code of ordinances and the home rule charter. My problem is that, and I've written three letters to the council regarding this. When you look at the, when you go to the code of ordinance, it clearly states that uh, yeah, please. It clearly states that all bid, all bid proposed, proposed contracts. Uh -huh. That up a little bit so we can read it. Okay. The or the ordinance section is ten dash one o five, and it refers to the bidding process. Okay. 
and that first sentence it refers to section 5.6 of the code of ordinance I mean of the um, uh, home rule charter in that home rule charter it sets out policies and procedures for, per for the purchasing department and in those procedures it states that uh, the bids are to be open public in public and be the basis for award okay that last phrase be the basis of what for award is at the heart of what my concern is when you look at the bid tabulation from when the bids were open in public the purchasing department recorded the prices and for FCC they recorded a price for option D or package D of forty dollars per yard waste sticker okay when the trans transmittal letter from this administration to this body comes that forty dollars per yard waste sticker is now a dollar ninety eight per sticker on the draft ordinance that you are going to be voting on it's a dollar ninety eight per sticker my question is how do you have a procurement process that cannot can 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 avoid being challenged in a court of, in a court of law or by another bidder that didn't have the same opportunity that FCC had to change their bid because that's what happened after the bid automatic it, some, somehow it went from forty dollars a yard waste sticker to a dollar ninety eight and per our home rule charter it says that the bid that was open in public is the basis for award. So that's my question. Thank I would you. like an answer to that if you could. Thank you. Mr. Italis, you're up next and followed by Larry Storr. Uh, Stephen Italis, I live at uh, 1018 South 36th Street. I um, am a former biology teacher, a former county board member, and uh, a trustee of a small village and been involved with solid waste for 50 years. And uh, I'm not here as an opponent. I'm here as a proponent for the low bid. That's what we worked on in Winnebago County, Northern Illinois. And if the uh, bidders were bona fide, we went with the low bid. It seemed the American way, but maybe not the Spanish way. It would seem that from the communications in the paper that the uh, mayor has already made up her mind uh, the 20-year um, reference is even beyond the reasonable 10-year uh, reference which is uh, much longer than should be considered with the rapidly changing markets for recyclables and the need for um, proper recycling the recycling program as we know it has run its course it is dead the CEO of our recycling program is asking for more money it is not making money it won't make money uh, if you want to remove the most valuable components from the waste stream put on a bottle bill that'll get the cans and bottles out but the inclusion of yard waste and uh, fiber cardboard paper in a landfill is actually a positive component it stabilizes the landfill and if you want to know what to do with the land afterwards put a solar farm on top of it it isn't good to build on county stadium in milwaukee was built on a dump and they had to tear it down but there are uses for open land and i would suggest that in at the least cut a contract with uh, a five-year limit so that you can get a second chance and do it right I thank you thank you mr. store followed by Luis Jimenez I have to repeat my name again yes Larry store 5015 Lafayette Avenue from Nebraska I live in the 68132 area. There are some 
older homes, some larger homes, some smaller homes, some homes on hills, some homes with alleys. Uh, there are some younger people or some older people. I myself don't look forward to a 96 gallon. Now two of them and probably three carts. My property is not going to handle that. Are you going to fine me for leaving carts out on the front of your lawn? I can't handle that, particularly on a snowy, icy day. Are you going to reject my claims for injuries when I fall on the ice trying to move a 96 gallon cart? How about my neighbor that's 93 years old? How about some of the kids that are helping parents that are injured or incapable? Are you going to deny those claims like we do with potholes? Because you're surely going to have them. Some people are just going to not do it. So are you going to take their property because they didn't comply with a city ordinance? Is that part of a redevelopment plan maybe for East Omaha? Could be. We need to ask those, some of those questions. Uh, Chicken Lickin said the sky was falling and the, the road runner never could catch, uh, the fox could never catch the road runner. But they kept coming up with all these schemes from the Acme Toy Company. And I mean, you know, why don't you have three of those carts sitting out here so people can see how large those are? And then imagine it being filled with yard waste. I don't think so. Not when I'm maybe 80 years old. Not when I'm probably only two years older than now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jimenez. Followed by Kathy Jeffers. Luis Jimenez, 2205 North 24th Street. Good day, council members. Residents want their trashed picked up but now they also care what happens next. So I appreciate the hard work conducted to get to where the contract is today with changes. Uh, and the process has been good. Um, there's been a lot of discussions from different individuals coming together to have those discussions, I believe. But even though the contract is provided by the mayor's office today here, it is city council property. Once approved and implemented, implemented, I'm not convinced you're going to take responsibility for the service. Thank you. Kathy Jeffers, followed by David Corbin, Sierra Club. Kathy Jeffers, um, 5706 South 173rd Avenue. Thank you, Mr. President Jeremy, as well as the council members for listening to us. I am speaking on uh, for Omaha Together, One Community Environmental Sustainability Team. We have again been asked whether we want to continue to uh, separate yard waste to produce Omaha despite the known additional costs. OTOC from the beginning, over two years ago, supported separating garbage from yard waste to be placed in a covered, lar in a covered container and to be processed at the Omegro composting facility. It will prolong the usefulness of the limited amount of space in the landfill. As a master gardener for the University of Nebraska Extension program, I teach people to use integrated pest management practices, such as amending their clay soil with a in a regenerative way to build healthy soils with this compost. The overwhelming public voice was spoken on April 23rd uh, at your city council meeting, and a large support wanted the continuation of composting yard waste, and that's why we're here today to reiterate our program. Let's not be short-sighted at the 10-year garbage contract with composting um, let's not be short-sighted, but look at the new 10-year garbage contract uh, with composting, yard waste, as well as recycling biweekly as part of the big picture solution for helping our city be a leader for other cities to follow. Thank you for your time and um, selecting this solid waste contract that will be the best for Omaha, for us and future.
future generations. Thank you. Mr. Corbin. Um, Mr. Sullivan, did you want to speak on this one, too, as in your you're with both companies, I presume? Yes. Okay. You'll be next. David Corbin, 1002 North 39th Street. I'm the chair of the Nebraska Sierra Club. I'm also a retired public health professor for UNO and also teach at Creighton. But my main reason for being here today on behalf of the Sierra Club is our concern for methane in the landfill. The more organic materials you put in there, the more methane is re released into the atmosphere. It's a potent greenhouse gas. The American Public Health Association, who I've represented Nebraska there for over two decades, puts climate crisis at the top of their priorities. Young people, uh, in a Yale study, 70% of adults 18 or younger say they're worried about global warming compared to only 56% of those 55 plus. There's a group called Republic N, which basically puts climate change on their top priority. This is Republicans who are young Republicans who are talking about facing the issues of the climate crisis. Recently, it was announced a blueprint in Nebraska to try to entice 43,000 young people to come to Nebraska to live and work. In that, they do not mention anything about the youth. Uh, there is something about transportation. There's nothing about the fact that young people want to live in a sustainable community. We must have the three carts. The longer you can uh, have the uh, yard waste collected, the better it is for the environment. Uh, the one thing, I know that there's something in the contracts about education, and you talked about it uh, at length when we were talking about the plastic bag ban, about the need for education. I hope whatever you decide that part of that education is talking about what is going to be the climate in the next 10, 20 years, and this is a long contract. Uh, if you think that you can capture most of that, that is not true. Yes, you can capture it, and you can create uh, energy uh, like OPPD is doing right now. I just came from their meeting today. Uh, but the majority of it does not get captured. The majority of it goes into the atmosphere. It's a potent greenhouse gas. I'm not here to speak on favoring one company over the other, but favoring a three-cart system. And, and the longer you can uh, collect that yard waste separately, the better. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Corbin. Mr. Sullivan, followed by Mary Ruth Stegman. Again, Bo Sullivan with Rare Pacific. Uh, again, proponent for West Central. So as the uh, President alluded to, we're in support of both co both companies. So I just want to get, reiterate our support for them as we've partnered with them for over 20 years. And again, Rare is the only company that can be a one-stop shop from production, delivery, and technology all under our roof. And, and just wanted to highlight our goal is to help you guys maximize your return on invested capital, help the hauler decrease their operational costs, you know, end of the day. Make sure the uh, residents of Omaha have a, have a smooth transition, as we, we know a lot of eyes are going to be watching this project. Thank, Thank you. you. Mary Ruth Stegman, followed by Alan Vavolka. President Jaron and City Council members, my name is Mary Ruth Stegman. I live at 4512 Pier Street. <clears throat> I have communicated you, with you before about the solid waste contract. I understand that today you will vote for one of the four bids from FCC or West Central Sanitation. It is unclear how the mayor's plan for the number of weeks of unlimited yard waste collection coordinates with these bids. It is also unclear whether there will be 12, 8, or some smaller number of weeks of unlimited yard waste collection. I will just reiterate our position that we oppose any yard waste being sent to the landfill. In a June 11, 2019 letter to you, Mayor Stothert wrote, 
quote, a primary reason to offer separate collection is to produce Omegirl, unquote. OTOC's position is that the primary reason for separate collection is to reduce methane produced by decomposing yard waste from the landfill. Methane in the first 20 years is 72 times better than carbon dioxide at infrared heat retention. And it is heat retention in the atmosphere and oceans that is significantly contributing to the climate change that we are all now experiencing. While it is true that methane collection system to produce electricity at Pheasant Hill landfill, much of the methane is not collected. And we understand that there are no plans or funds to expand this methane collection system in view of the greatly increased amount of methane that will be produced if yard waste is deposited in the landfill as it now is for the next 10 or 20 years. OTOC's Environmental Sustainability Action Team urges you to select a solid waste contract that does not send yard waste to the landfill. And I also would like to thank you for all the time and effort that you have spent in considering this next solid waste contract. Thank you. Mr. Pavolka, followed by what is currently our last registered opponent, Mr. Michael O'Hara. So if you are an opponent and wish to speak and have not signed in, last chance to do so. Alan Vavoka, 3719 Hamilton. It strikes me as inappropriate that a, a city the size of Omaha should even consider not having a recycling program and a yard waste program. It's very short-sighted. If you decide to be that short-sighted, my suggestion would be to agree with the suggestion that the contract term should be shortened because this is not a forward-looking approach to dump yard waste in the landfill and possibly to throw the recyclables in there with them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. O'Hara, followed by our last speaker, Mr. Fonensteel. Hello, Michael O'Hara from the Nebraska Chapter of the Sierra Club, uh, 6035 Binning Street. Uh, public health and safety is one of your most important duties. In fact, it might very well be the most important. It is so important, it is, contains a rare statutory mandate. You shall pick up all yard, yard waste, you shall pick up all solid waste within the city and do so without a fee other than the property tax and the general fund. Public health is extremely complex. You're dealing with both the immediate and the future. And we would, in the Sierra Club, prefer to have the three bins. We're agnostic as to which person is going to pick them up. We're more interested in how you pick up the garbage and what you do with it. We want to have composting of the yard waste to reduce methane. And that also is the state policy that you compost yard waste as opposed to put it in the landfill. With respect to recycling, it, China has no longer taking our garbage because it is contaminated. If you use two bins, you're going to increase the frequency of contamination of that recycling bin, and that is going to increase the cost of recycling for you. As mentioned in today's paper, the tipping fee requested is at $100, and if you look at the county's tipping fees, they vary, but the more complex the material you're taking, the higher the tipping fee. If you'd like to reduce that tipping fee, go to three bins as opposed to two. Uh, we'd really urge you to support that. Uh, you are stewards of the public dollars, and I would hope you to remember that taxes are the price we pay for society, and you do not want to go on the cheap when you're buying safety and health. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. Mr. Fonensteel, and we had one more opponent sign in, Jeffrey Picorni. You'll be next. Hello, TJ Fonensteel, 5906 South 167 Avenue. I'm here on behalf of Students for Sustainability. Um, I'm here to express our concern with the terms of the proposed contract with FCC. It isn't too often that we hear a sustainability advocate um, 
argue on behalf of convenience, but under these circumstances, it is essential to maintain the benefits of year-round yard waste pickup and avoid the consequences, consequences of illegal dumping. Under the proposed contract, um, solid waste collection contract, Omahans will no longer be able to utilize the luxury of year-round yard waste pickup. It is true that Omaha sees the majority of its yard waste collections during the seasons of spring and fall, as would any other city. However, it would be false to say that the amount of yard waste collected during the remaining seasons isn't enough to necessitate year-round collections. Just not too long ago, I was woken up at um, 4 a.m. on Super Bowl Sunday um, by the sound of a 30-year-old tree crashing on top of our driveway. And by 8 a.m., we had 17 bags ready for the Monday pickup. And with this proposed contract, that we would have to find a different way to dispose of those 17 bags. Um, this is an experience shared by many people that have dealt with our Nebraskan winters and furthermore have not been forced to find other means of disposing the substantial amount of yard waste produced during winter months. And I would like to re reiterate what Mr. Corbin of Sierra Club said about the methane gas emissions with uh, disposing of the yard waste bags at the landfill. It is not an efficient way to, there's no efficient way to capture the methane gas and used for energy, and it's much more, um, much more efficient to just use it for composting. On another note, this, is, this contract also includes arrangements for bi-weekly collections of recyclables that will in turn be delivered to First Star Recycling. I hope you guys are all well versed with the current issues surrounding the recycling in Omaha, and are aware of the fact that if the current contract is not renegotiated, recycling services will end and all recyclables will inevitably be sent to the landfill. I hate to say that by the looks of it, there's a strong likelihood that this will in fact happen. And in that circumstance, we will be paying FCC for services that will no longer be able to be fulfilled. So we need guarantees with what will be happening with the recycling system in Omaha before, I, we, need to, uh, before we make a final decision on this contract. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Picorn. Jeffrey Picorni. 4969 South, 149th Court. I've been a participant in almost every garbage disposal system known to man, from my five-year-old experience with Jack Sackman or in Schuyler, Nebraska, when he would give me a ride over to my friend's house, to the Army in Vietnam when they burned everything, to Omaha's system, and now I'm here as a 76-year-old representing my six grandchildren, age 10 to 20. What you do today I probably won't outlive. You're going to, the system, 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, and I'll probably be gone. But my grandchildren might say, what did you do at my funeral? What did you do to challenge you folks? You're in an interesting situation here. And I'm not so much a proponent for or against whatever you're doing, except for the fact, a little bit of a critic. You've got HDR. And I'm a little biased because my son-in-law works for them. But you should go to them and say, What's the perfect system for the city of Omaha? And not say, uh, here's what, what we've done in the past. This is what we need to do in the future to ensure the quality of our life today, 10 years, 20 years, and 100 years down the line. You need to, there should not be really any garbage when everything starts off as something that's pure and unique, whether it's food or metal or whatever. Uh, ABCs should not be permitted in the waste stream. Aluminum beverage cans should not be permitted in the waste stream. And I don't know how you stop that. It's just like it, there's a 75 mile speed limit on the interstate. Not everybody obeys it. One, two, three, five percent. And then if you passed a law against ABCs into the waste stream, maybe five percent of the people would still throw them in there. But you get 95 or 90 percent of the cans, which is the most valuable product that first tier recycles now. It almost would pay for the system. I, I'm a student of my garbage in my neighborhood. I walk, walk the streets every Monday morning when they pick it up. Papillion Sanitation does it. And I see things put out that are, amaze me, that, that are perfectly good. And I, I hear the garbage man picking up the sacks and there's aluminum cans in there. Lots of them. If they can make a noise that I can hear. I hear again, I'm 76 years old and hearing impaired. But if I can hear those aluminum cans rolling around, it, it's a sin. It's a sin. And I challenge you folks to go back to the drawing board. I think you're premature today. Go to HDR and say, listen, what is the ideal situation? 
what is the best garbage collection system in the world, in the world, and say, this is what we're going to do. And it's pay me now or pay me later. It's going to save you money, and it might save my grandchildren's lives. Instead of me, I passed my due date, 76, probably four years or five years past the average. Folks live to be 89, and I hope to make it to that. But that's the outer limits. Those 20 to 10-year-old grandchildren are going to be here for 60 years, 70 years, if, in fact, they can survive. You heard the methane testimony today. It, it doesn't make sense. I don't generate any yard waste to the system. It all goes, if I have some clippings or whatever, I throw them behind the flowers, and in a month, they're dried up and gone. And that's the way it should be. Now, if somebody's really fastidious and has to get rid of their grass clippings, work with that system. Go to HDR and say, what do we do with those people that will not allow one grass clipping on their yard? But I'm not hearing that today. What I am hearing is that you're rejecting the low bid. And their proponent made a, made a good presentation as far as I can see. I try and read everything in the World Herald about waste collection and recycling. Recycling is more of, of a, my avocation than, than garbage, but I, I'm living in the garbage. I see what my neighbors throw away. Perfectly good stuff. You've got to address that problem first, I would think. I would think. Am I hitting my 10 minutes yet? Well, you're to oh, well the, the only thing I'll repeat is something that I think is... No, 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 no need to repeat. Is life or death? Is life or death? And the thing is, I don't know what the life expectancy average here is, but there's some young ones here. But you're not going to beat this problem. You've got to come up with the unique solution. And Omaha is the perfect incubator for it. If you didn't have the best engineering firm in the, maybe in the world, in the United States for sure, but in the world, HDR, and they're your consultants, you go to them and say, how do we get out of this mess? How do we do it? Thank you, Mr. Picorn. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, did, Mr. Tyler, did you want a minute of rebuttal? Uh, thank you. Um, again, just to reiterate our, our support of SCC and the, um, the two-part alternative, I, I would like to respond to Mr. Magruder on the, his point on the... Um, and if you could limit to that. Please. Sure, sure, on, on the SCC. Um, what, what we had with that is uh, we did not define the unit for that bid item, and um, it, it was a unit correction. Um, the FCC bid on a larger type of basically yard waste collection vessel, okay? That was, we did not define the unit. Um, when we went back to them and asked them if they would accept a bid price based on the unit that everyone else bid on, we adjusted it to that price that you all see there. So that How was, did the others know the unit size? It, it was it was an assumption on their part that it was that bag that we see on the streets, and it was an assumption on FCC's part that it was something else, and it was a, right. a fault on our part to not define. Thank that. you. Yep. Public hearing is closed. Council Member Festerson. Thanks, Mr. President. I, I want to thank everyone for their testimony here today. I do appreciate it. Um, it's a complicated issue, and it's our largest public contract, so it's important we get this right. Uh, and with so many bids and different versions on the agenda, it is hard to unpack all the details here, but I want to take uh, a chance to talk about a few of them today. And I do want to say that for us, a baseline is the effective and timely collection of trash from people's streets and curbsides. To me, that should be a given, but I agree wholly with the testimony today that we need to be thinking much more than just that. We should have the expectation that we're also having an effective environmental program that involves composting and, and recycling going forward. And so if you have that perspective, and I do, um, you're not naturally inclined to the two cart options that are before us here uh, because they commingle, and that's not something I support. I've been very clear about that for several years now. And I do want to say something about the council. I think but for the council's involvement, I don't think waste management would have been held to the standard of their contract, which was to separate yard waste or at least had the heat put on them to, uh, uh, for that. I don't think many of these, of these bids would have included separate yard waste collection, and I, I don't think we'd have a supplemental bid before us today that deals with separate yard waste collection to, to consider. So I do think we've made some progress in terms of our position on that. 
Residents in my district are very concerned still, though, about capacity and, and composting in separate yard waste. We have a lot of that in my area. Um, and so if you have that perspective, you, you prefer the three-card options that we have before us here today, which also aren't perfect, but do better address those situations. And that's because they institutionalize separate yard waste collections and composting, not just in a separate contract. They can be 35 weeks long, not just eight or maybe 12 weeks. And that third cart can address capacity issues even in the off season. And I would say the, comp the, the competing proposal to what's been recommended to us today does those things and is still $2 million less than, than what's been recommended. So that's something we need to consider. But what I want to drill down into a little bit, Mr. Tyler, if you can come to the podium today, is the supplemental yard waste bid because without that, to me, the recommendation is a non-starter. Um, and I know that that public hearing is not technically until um, the following week, but um, I don't think you can have a conversation about this without drilling down on that. And that's really the new item of information we've had in the last couple of weeks. So a few questions for you. Um, can you just confirm that the supplemental yard waste contract is only a five-year contract, even though it has the ability to be extended? That's, that's correct. And why, why was it the decision made to make it five years versus 10 like the rest of the contract? You know, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to why the other one's 10, and then I'll come back to why we made five for the other one. It, it's, it's very, um, we, we do not like to end, enter into extremely long-term contracts, except for if there, we see an absolute need. And there was an absolute need for the larger solid waste contract to have that duration in it. And the reason is that if you have a company coming in from out of town, that has to make a substantial investment, they need that long-term view. They need to know that if, if I have at least 10 years to recoup my funds. Um, when we looked, we, we truly looked at the yard waste complement as a supplement to that larger contract. We saw it as a, um, we saw the five-year plus five-year as a long-term demonstration. That was the opinion of Public Works when we put together those bids. And I'll talk about some of the terms of that contract. So um, from our conversation this morning, I know should there be a non-performance on the yard waste supplemental contract, there is a $1.5 million bond a company would have to give up if they couldn't perform that work. Right? The, yeah, so, so with both contracts, there's a performance bond equal to um, one year of the contract value. And if that contractor cannot perform that work, we'll go to their surety company, who they, the bondholder, and we will tell them that they have to find someone to perform that contract. And if it didn't go to that extreme, it was just they're missing some cleanups, some pickups like waste management has. There's also a fine system in place. Can you describe how that would work? Sure, system of fines, liquidated damages based on number of complaints. Um, if a number of complaints exceeds a certain number, and, and I don't have those exact formulas, um, but if the number of complaints exceeds a certain number, then you take, um, we have a formula that penalizes or um, has uh, liquidated damages to that uh, contractor for not performing the work. We also have the ability to recoup funds if our staff has to go out and complete that work for the contractor as well. That's in both contracts. Okay. And then in terms of, in terms of the contract itself, let's, let's, let's say a mayor and a contractor no longer wants to perform that work or just think it's too hard or too expensive or what have you that supplemental contract could be dissolved by mutual agreement, right? Uh, that, I'll say that supplemental contract, if the, um, if the council desires for it to continue, that we would have, we, Public Works, would have no intention of allowing it to not continue. Mm -hmm. But in that instance, nothing would come to the council on that. That might be our opinion, but we wouldn't have a say over it. Um, I'd have to refer, excuse me, I'd have to refer that to law. I, I, okay. I believe that to be the yeah, case, which, yeah. which is concerning for me in terms of the permanency I'm seeking inside of an uh, overall trash contract. Um, let's move on, though, to, to the supplemental contract's time frame. So the contractor would have um, be charged with picking up yard waste between 8 and 12 weeks during the year. So that could be as few as 8 weeks. Uh, which is essentially two months, which could be most likely April and October. 
So, yeah, so we have the terms of the contract, I believe, and Jim, help me with this um, if I get this incorrect. So um, between April and June in the spring and between, is it September and November in the fall? December. Through December. So uh, at our discretion, um, and, and this is, will be a learning <coughs> experience for us, you know, we're going to decide what period of time we're going to collect in the spring and fall. And we'll, we'll kind of make it like the, um, the current um, program we have um, with the neighborhood cleanup. You know, we decide every year, you know, what that will consist of. So we have, uh, we have to give the contractor 90 days for them to be able to understand what that period will be. And then we'll decide in that first year, we'll use six weeks and we'll understand if that's the period of time that makes sense or if there should be a lesser period of time you know, four to six weeks. That's why we put that flexibility in there so we could adapt that program over time, kind of right size it um, based on how we see things over time. But we're gonna, it's one of these things to where we wanna make sure, um, you know, the first time we never get it exactly right, we could put some flexibility into the length of the season and the timing of the season too for that contract. And if it was the minimum time uh, necessitated by the contract, which is eight weeks, is that a long enough period of time to sustain a composting program well into the future? We believe it is. Um, let's shift gears a little bit to the three-cart discussion. Um, so in the three-cart option, the third cart presumably is for um, year-round yard waste. It's not unlimited, but it is year-round. Um, in the off season, like it is now, that third cart's still available and could still could be used to then commingle yard waste and our regular trash, right? So, so in that off season, that cart, if the residents so choose to set it out, if they needed capacity, that cart would be picked up and everything in that cart would go to the landfill. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, I want to call up also the company representatives, if I can, that I spoke to this morning. Uh, maybe Dan first. Mr. Brazil. Come on down. These aren't uh, surprise questions to them because I met with both of you this morning and asked you these very same questions, but I, I think it's important to kind of walk through these things some more. Um, so uh, th there's a, there has been an observation out there on the supplemental yard waste bid mm -hmm. that uh, yours was quite low compared to the other bid. And so there's been wonder of was that just a lost leader in terms of getting the rest of the contract and, and securing that that business wanted to give you a chance to address that yeah so if, if you look at our three car proposal versus our two car proposal there was about a 5.5 million dollar difference so that was us budgeting for 35 weeks of yard waste adding the additional trucks people for those uh, collections when you look at our seasonal approach we're at about 1.5 million and it's uh, budgeted for 12 weeks of work so it very well falls in line with how we budgeted and how we priced our two cart versus three cart uh, which we believe you know keeps our pricing consistent it's not a it's not a shot in the dark number it very much aligns with how we prior bid the other thing i'd say to that is uh, we don't bid things to lose money we can't do that we wouldn't be in business if we did so we feel very confident about our main bid that we know we put adequate resources and adequate uh, you know cost assumptions in that to make sure we turn a profit and we did so the same way with our, our supplemental yard waste bid to be confident that we can operate it for the city's needs, but also at a, at a profitable rate. And one of the ways you're doing that is with seasonal workers and drivers. Um, and so I want you to give you a chance to answer this question too, because we've had sort of a bad experience with, the, with our current hauler in terms of um, not having enough, I think, drivers and um, seasonal workers and not, uh, either not or either not having the ability or not being willing to bring in more resources nationally like they do have. Mm -hmm. to address um, separate yard waste pickup throughout the city in, in recent years. Um, and that's, I think, a major aspect of, of your bid. Can you speak to that a little bit? Your yeah, level? so uh, when, when we looked at the, the staffing needs of this supplemental bid and how we would address that, we, we first looked at let's hire full-time employees for your own work. The challenge, in our opinion, is when you have 12 weeks of work but try to hire someone for a full year-round job, now there's not enough work to go around for your people and you can have frustration with, within your employees. So the approach we took is we said, okay, our, our main bid has 59 routes. We have 60 drivers planned plus 10 swing drivers to cover vacations, sick time, adequate training. 
uh, to cover the city. We know that through proper operational planning and some resource shifts, we can absorb some of the supplemental contract with our current resources that are planned with the contract. The other piece, we'll have an estimated 400 U.S. drivers uh, in operation by the time this contract goes live. So we're looking at that, and I'm saying I could, I could take five to eight employees from other locations that, that I help oversee and use them as a, uh, as a resource for this contract. We have several people, we've already done some internal polling that would love to be able to travel a little bit, not all the time, but uh, that experience to go to another community, another site and operate something like this. Uh, we would also look at subcontracting with, with local vendors. I know initially it sounded like there wasn't a lot of interest from local companies, potentially because of the size or quantity required. However, I think there's not a very good opportunity for us to partner with some local local haulers potentially, obviously, at, at their will, and uh, we could supplement some of the routes that way. And then last is, you know, there are seasonal drivers or temporary drivers, we'd call them. That would be our last resort, but is an option out uh, in, the, in the workforce and uh, something we could look at for this bid. Okay. And then as one who is skeptical of a shorter term su supplemental bid as opposed to having yard waste collection within the main bid itself, mm -hmm. what would you say to convince me of your commitment to picking up yard waste? Well, I'll tell you that uh, we view the supplemental bid tied to the main contract. It is no benefit to FCC or, quite frankly, the residents of Omaha for us to bid on a yard waste bid that's separate and fail on it. Uh, we, have, we hope to have a relationship with the City of Omaha through the main contract and obviously the supplemental one. And, you know, I've heard rumors that uh, there's risk we may walk away from the contract or not perform it. But I'll tell you firsthand that if we ever failed on that contract or walked away from it, it would be very pressing and hard for us to ever obtain additional contracts. And as a company that's uh, you know, focuses on municipal collections and uh, achieving future growth in the Midwest if we're able to substantiate a site here, that, that is not an option for us. So it, it's fully dedicated, but again, it goes back to the fact that we priced that thing where we know we need to to make money. It is not a loss to get into the main contract. We did not underbid it. We took a lot of time to study, analyze, and prepare to ensure we're profitable to be able to sustain that work. And my last question for now, and I'll ask this of both, both companies, is something that isn't really an operational question, but it's definitely going to be a concern to people. Should we move to a cart system when they find out the carts are being delivered and they still have their five or ten garbage cans sitting there and they'll be like, oh my gosh, what do I do with these? Mm -hmm. um, that could be as many as 500,000 cans in our city, uh, most of which are plastic, so a pretty big plastic, plastic issue yeah. that I care about. Um, we talked this morning about how would FCC handle that. Uh, in terms of potential drop-off sites and a vendor you used that could recycle those. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I have personally have past experience with my last company as well as FCC does in current contracts that we have taken over in large cities where it has went from a personal container to a, you know, 64, 96-gallon cart. The challenge is always what happens to the residents' containers after they get the new carts, as, as you just alluded to. So. Through that partnership, what we proposed a couple months ago to Public Works in a written letter uh, is our plan to ensure the recycling and removal of those carts. So we already have the relationship in place. We've already you know, started conversations around that to see what it would look like, but already have that company committed uh, and able to help in that situation. So really for us, we would take ownership of that. We would coordinate. Uh, and we would staff drop site locations, probably the majority of those being at our facility that we would end up having. Um, the company would in turn provide the transportation, remove the carts, whether it's plastic, metal, uh, some older carts have some different materials they're made of, but then find the end market to recycle those, those products and ultimately provide for a cleaner Omaha. And that's outside the contracts and the bids here, but just something you, you're committing today that you would do. Absolutely, yep. We committed a couple months ago when we wrote the letter. And your vendor recycles those, doesn't just Absolutely. landfill. Yeah, yep, yeah. correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Don, if you would too. Mr. Williams. President Jerem, Councilor Festerson. Thank you. Your name and address just for the President. Don Williamson, uh, 1423 Fair Acre Lane, Southwest Wilmer, Minnesota. Great, thanks. So I'll follow up to our conversation this morning, too. I, I wanted to have um, 
in a similar fashion, if, if there was a criticism of your supplemental bid, it mm -hmm. would be, gosh, why was it so far off in terms of the price that was offered compared to, um, to FCC in this case? Um, and some of, the, some of the questions out there were, well, is this just them trying to supplement um, the, cr the first bid if that was underbid by any means or didn't have enough equipment? I wanted to give you a chance to address that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Festerson, on the supplemental yard waste bid, um, to, to get your mind around that, it, there are some things that changed in it, and that it, one of them is an unlimited yard waste collection that the supplemental envisions. And an unlimited yard waste bid is truly what it says. It's unlimited. You don't know if you're going to come up with five bags or a hundred bags at a location. And we all know what our Midwest seasons are like. Spring may hit on one weekend, and it may hit hard and stay. And then if everyone gets busy in their yard work, you have to be able to provide the service that this, uh, this bid uh, envisioned and not have the mayor's hotline being called because the yard waste wasn't collected on the given week. So we poured the resources we thought we had to have to do that and in our supplemental yard waste bid it was 30 trucks and um, the associated staff plus 10% uh, swing drivers to staff those trucks. We were um, looking at that in the sense of that uh, also from our experience we cannot find train drivers to drive six weeks or four weeks in the spring and four weeks or six weeks in the fall. That is, that's, it's troubling to do and almost impossible for us to see happening. Um, the, the other thing is in the springtime is when the CDL drivers or trained operators are at their peak of demand and we know that the concrete companies are running, construction companies are hitting their stride, uh, landscaping companies are starting to, to roll and uh, it's just a huge demand for the type of uh, person that we need to operate these trucks in the spring and we did not want to be under the gun not having the people to, to supply the staff to do it. So to do it right we felt we had to commit 30 trucks to do that seasonal yard waste plan. And we also in our training program you can't just send a person out and say okay go to go to Dundee and pick up a thousand stops today and he's never been on the route. It takes six weeks of training. At least six weeks of training to turn a man loose in a three to four hundred thousand dollar truck and expect them to go out there and operate safely and efficiently. You just can't take someone off the street and expect them to do that job. So we, by the time you take the six-week plan, add six weeks of training, you do that twice a year. Our, our plan calls for permanent yard waste uh, personnel and permanent drivers, operators, and permanent trucks. We did not feel we could satisfy what the city of Omaha demands. We've watched the newspapers for the past couple of years. We've seen the comments. We've seen the public comment on different types of social media. We were not going to fail. Okay, thank you. And on your three cart option, um, I guess just confirmation that that third cart is for yard waste, separate pickup, uh, 35 weeks out of the year, but then it's still available for commingling or trash in the off season, right? Councilor Pesterson, yes, that's what the RFB required as given to us by the city, and that's what we bid it to do, yes. Okay. Um, I want to give you a chance, to, two more questions. I want to give you a chance also to address the, my interest in what do people do with their current cans should the system change and make sure they're handled in an environmentally responsible way. Yeah. We'd have to work with the city for education. As we know, education on a cart system would take a comprehensive education system, as I know Public Works is probably preparing for, but also uh, a plan envisioned to take care of those excess containers would be necessary. And it would need to be done in a phased-in uh, plan, sim the same as the cart delivery would be phased in, because you're not going to phase in 150,000 uh, residents getting all their carts delivered in one day or one week. It's going to be a plan of over a few months, maybe 90 days to 120 days, depending on how the public works would lay that out and work with our company. So the plan to pick up the carts, most of them are of plastic nature today but there are still maybe some metal cans. Metal cans would stay in the uh, Omaha vicinity and be uh, salva at, recycled at a salvage yard, a metal, re metal reclamation yard, if there are still some metal ones out there. The plastic ones would go to a regrinder. A grinder is one that's going to chip that plastic, screen it, sort it, and uh, then it's going to be uh, used for drain tile and for exportable pallets. Uh, we work with Rarick Pacific for recycling containers like that. They have uh, partnerships with a uh, grinder in Clinton, Iowa, and one in Missouri. We could use one of those two as a resource. As we do know, Councilor Festerson, and you've heard today from uh, some of your citizens, and you know, in the thing with your recycling contract, uh, 
getting rid of recyclables right now. There's not a lot of value in that type of plastic in today's market. In fact, there's probably no value in it. So there would be transportation costs. Um, and uh, we did not offer that as a um, totally free option to the city. I'm going to be honest and tell the council that today. But we would certainly be a strong partner with you to get it done as cheap as possible. And if we could work with Public Works and some of their many yards around the town to have collection sites, that would be the most reasonable way to get those off the street and get them recycled. But we would work with you with a plan that would succeed. And I don't want to put you on, on the spot in terms of that, but I think it's important for folks to know um, potential costs that could entail. So I, I think FCC has committed no cost on that. Um, do you, are you comfortable giving an estimate of what you think that could cost, um, your, the way you'd handle it? Um, I, not knowing the distance that these products would have to travel to be recycled, because that's what the goal would be to recycle them. Hopefully they would be within a state away to get them recycled. I can't tell you exactly what it would be, because I'm, I'm not totally prepared for that, but I would envision it could be up to $500,000, because you have transportation costs. Okay. We would do our best to make it lower. Okay. And my final question for now, um, the, another question, um, around being low bidder and low bidder by a lot uh, was, gosh, can they really scale up and do this work this fast and perform the service everybody's going to want and demand, frankly? I wanted to give you a chance to address that head on. Sure. Thank you, Councilor Festers. And um, uh, this is our 40th anniversary. I told you that. Uh, we've been a growing company from day one, and we grow for a simple reason. Um, our customers are happy with us, and every customer has led us to a new customer. And um, we continue to have that same practice every day. Our company's slogan is good neighbors you've come to trust. And we try to make that into our DNA of our company. And uh, we do truly want to be good neighbors. To, as far as scope and ability to handle Omaha, uh, we do Omaha every day now. But we do it in 21 counties in Midwest Minnesota. We cover 12,500 square miles every week in Minnesota. We service well over 150,000 customers every week in Minnesota. We do it out of five locations. We do it spring, summer, fall, and winter. And we've been doing it successfully for a long time. And I think of one thing I can tell you was the 36 or 37 letters of reference we gave you from all the municipalities and counties we serve with ongoing contracts. We still have every contract, every municipal, city, or county contract that has ever, we've ever been granted. Every relationship we've ever had with a municipal body of every size, they've continued to work with West Central Sanitation. We've not had one leave us. And if that's not a testimony to us keeping our promises, I don't have anything stronger to give you, Councilor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Festerson. Mr. Harding. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I think Councilman Festerson covered a, a broad range of questions I was going to ask you, so I'll be brief. I just had a couple question, follow-up questions maybe on the um, even though it's, we'll address this issue later about having the public hearing for the supplemental yard waste pickup. I, I did have a couple questions I wanted to ask of the law department, if I could, Mr. Kratz. If at the, at the end of the five-year initial term, um, would, would the, the ability to extend or exercise the option period be uh, unilateral for both parties, or is it how, how is that anticipated to be approved? Uh, Paul Kratz, City Attorney, it depends how it's written up. It can be written up in uh, different ways. Sometimes it's is the, there Is there the, a draft? I'm sorry to interrupt. If, if there, there is, I haven't seen it, so I can't tell you offhand. Usually it's a mutual agreement uh, that both would agree to extend it. Okay, well, actually the rest of my questions would then also pertain to, to the rest of, of that agreement, but um, as, as it relates to pricing and some other things. so. It, if we don't have that in draft form right now, I guess I'll just wait till we yeah. see the draft of that to ask those okay. questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harding. If there's no one else that wishes to be heard on the council, we would uh, the chair would entertain a motion on item th uh, 34 to postpone the third reading and vote to August 27. A motion on item 35 to lay over the third reading and vote to August 27, and then the clerk, when she reads up the non-action items, will handle the motion on item 53. Roll call. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero.
Non-action items, items 36 through 53 do not require public hearing or city council consideration at this meeting, but will be placed on a future agenda for public hearing and or vote. The reason for non-action is noted after the item on the agenda, as well as the date the item is expected to appear on an agenda for consideration. And then we have item 53, an ordinance to award the contract to FCC for OPW 53641 for yard waste collection. And I believe there is a motion to postpone the public hearing to the third reading and vote on August 27th, 2019. No, no, no motion. No, no motion. Uh, is there a motion to lay over the public hearing and the vote on item 53 to August 27th? Roll call. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Mr. President. Yes, and we will stand in recess uh, unless there's objection until 6.30 when we'll reconvene for public hearing on the 2020 recommended budget.